Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk, the series where I talk about whatever is on my mind. The thing that's on my mind today is criticism, specifically the criticisms leveled at this channel. Criticism is something that we all need in our lives in order to improve and grow because if we were only too self-correct, we as human beings would probably never improve. Steel sharpens steel, as they say. Or is it iron sharpens iron? Ah, who cares? The point is that criticism is needed and very much welcome on this channel. The problem, though, is that people almost never know what the hell they're talking about, and because social media has given everyone a voice, everyone seems to think that their opinions are valid, and they choose to spout their ignorance for everyone to hear. Well, your old Uncle Birdman is here to tell you, no, your opinion is not valid, and that you should probably not begin typing what you're about to type, because it's almost assuredly going to be opinionated nonsense. What does this have to do with this channel? Well, I'm going to address some of the most annoying opinion pieces aimed at my channel, so sit back, relax, and get ready to hear a YouTuber fire back at critics in an overly long rant. This is one of the newest critiques leveled at my channel, so this one is fresh in my mind and really touches a nerve with me. As you can see on the screen, I responded to this person and maybe he will feel attacked by the way I came at him, but I want people to understand that this attitude really grinds my gears. People who don't create videos have absolutely no idea the amount of work that goes into producing a high quality video on YouTube. They assume that we just throw some shit together in a few minutes or a few hours, upload it, and rake in the cash. Not only that, they are extremely salty that YouTubers make money from making videos because they assume we're all just sitting on our asses all day and are making great money for no work. Well, I'm going to show you the work that goes into creating one of my Everything Wrong With series, and hopefully you'll have a better idea of what it takes to do what I do. Okie dokie, so uh, this is what uh, my workspace looks like. This is Premiere Pro. This is what I use to edit my Everything Wrong With Cinema Sense series. You'll see that this is the original um, template that I've been using ever since my first Everything Wrong With video, which was the Blade Runner 2049 video. Um, I'll just kind of show you what that looks like. Let that play there. So you can kind of get an idea of what that looks like. But here's the thing. I have to create an intro that would go right under here. And then maybe some music that would go all the way under here. So that uh, you have something interesting to look at when you first turn on these videos. And I'll show you what uh, that like a completed version of that looks like in a second. But uh, what I really want to do is show you how long it takes for me to make these videos. So. What I'm going to do is I'm only going to make two sins right here and I'm going to do it in real time so that you kind of get an idea of what that looks like. So uh, I've already captured some footage here from Jeremy's Everything Wrong With Pacific Rim video and I'm just going to cut it and start it like right here. So you can kind of see this is raw footage. This is what it all looks like when I'm doing it. Um, and then I have some sample uh, audio from myself that I recorded in a voiceover right before making this video. So we're gonna mute myself and play Jeremy's video. So this is what it looks like when I create. This digitized universal logo does not... So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start his video right at the beginning. Right there. Just trim it down here. And obviously this would be much longer normally because you know it would be the whole video, but I've only did a sample here just for This digitized universal logo does not really make sense for a Pacific Rim sequel. I mean, first of all, movie specific unique logos are typically reserved for surefire hits, not sequels most everyone expects nothing from. Okay. So we'll stop it there and back it up to right before his little ding hits, which is right here. I'll cut this video and move it back. Then I will interject my commentary. And 
gonna zoom in here. And then you'll hear me say something like this. Oh, I'm muted, sorry. <laughs> Nothing from. Nope, that's, that's not even close to being true. Huntsman Winter's War, flop. Doom, flop. 47 Ronin, flop. Repo Men, flop. And I'm gonna stop it right there because there's a joke in, in this that I'm going to continue playing. So I'm gonna let that go back and then I'll bring his video back. And this is what it looks like and, and sounds like. This digitized Universal logo does not really make sense for a Pacific Rim sequel. I mean, first of all, movie-specific unique logos are typically reserved for surefire hits, not sequels most everyone expects nothing from. Nope, that's, that's not even close to being true. Huntsman Winter's War, flop. Doom, flop. 47 Ronin, flop. Repo Men, flop. Second of all, it's a movie about giant... So then you get the ding, which I'm using his original ding in almost every single one of the uh, the sins there. It's uh, the, the the original video's ding. So you'll see that the ding actually happens on his. Okay. Now, we need footage that goes over here, or else it'll just be black right here. So what I do is I will unlink this, and then copy, and then put it right there, and then maybe I'll change the speed to let's say 90% so that it fits all through there. So when my version plays, it looks like this. Bro, nope, that's that's not even close to being true, etc. And I wanna close this gap on my audio here. Close that and then just bring it closer. And slide everything up. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Nope, that's that's not even close to being true. Huntsman Winter's War, flop. Doom, flop. 47 Ronin, flop. Repo Men, flop. Just like that. Now, when the ding happens, the sin counter needs to change up here. Now, the way we do that is we cut right where it lines up. And then we go in and we change it to the number one. And then you'll see this number one will change eventually whenever we need to make another cut. We cut and then we put the one up there. Now we have to do subtitles. So I have a subtitle here that just says insert text here, Birdman. So do that, clear that out, and then we'll cut that there. Now I have to enter the text that I said here. Nope, that's... That's not even close to being true. Okay, so for the first one, it's gonna go like this. And then we write, nope, that's, that's not even close to being true. Just like that. And then we have to line it up to make sure that it's like, you know, kind of center. And I never get it perfect, but you know, it is what it is. So then it looks like this. Bro. Nope. That's that's not even close to being true. Huntsman. And then we have to enter the text that we have from there. So I think I said Huntsman Winter's War. Flop. Just like that. But a cool way that I do this is I'll normally put it all the way over here. And then continue with it. Winter's War, flop. Doom, doom, flop. So the next one would be Doom, flop. And then what's the next one? 47 Ronin, flop. Okay. 47 Ronin, flop. Repo Men, flop. And then the last one is Repo Men, flop. Okay, now, <laughs> the way I have to do this is we're gonna center it, but going with how I stated it, so for Huntsman example- Huntsman Winter's War, flop. Right here, I have to make a cut. So I cut that there. Doom, flop. I'll make another cut right there. 47 Ronin, flop. And then, let's see. 
go forward a little bit and I'll make another cut right here. So now we need to erase those things. Okay, go back, go here. Uh -oh. I'm going to erase repo min flop. Let me go back here. On this one, I'm going to erase repo min flop and 47 Ronin flop. And then we go back one more and I'm going, you can kind of see the pattern that's emerging here. So we're going to erase doom flop. Okay. So now it looks like this. It's nothing from. Nope. That's, that's not even close to being true. Huntsman winter's war flop. Doom flop. 47 Ronin flop. Repo men flop. Second. Of there you go. So that's, one sin and you see how long that takes for just one and now we're going to continue and and do the second sin and then i'll be done with that okay so the second sin is jeremy saying this of all it's a movie about giant robots fighting giant monsters it's not the matrix why are you digitizing like we're wreck it ropping into the internet for this adventure third okay so again we're going to cut right before the ding happens. Going to move his from there. Going to unlink this. And then we're gonna put my audio right there. Oh wait, I'm fucking up here. Come here you. I'm gonna put that there. And you can see there's a gap in my speech, so we're just gonna cut that out. Ripple delete it up. Okay, now the internet for this adventure the cat in the hat flop the thing flop oh sorry i was still kind of going on there <clears throat> the logo is digitized to represent the interior of a jaeger but so now so now you'll see that um that's the joke uh that i continue going on from the first sin that you know uh this is kind of disproving his first sin and it's it's a very long list of all the logos that have had, um, uh, they've had unique logos, but they weren't really good movies. They weren't surefire hits. So that's the joke there. And just same same thing we, we did for the first one. Just take that and then we're going to, let's say 65 on the speed there. Yeah, I got it about right, that's good. Just like that. And then we cut here and then we go over a little bit and we change this to two. This adventure. So, the cat in the hat. Flop. The thing. Flop. Oh, sorry. I was still kind of going on there. <clears throat> the logo is digitized to represent the interior of a Jaeger. Just like that. And then we go and put his last sin there. So then you'll see that this will change when the ding happens. Interior of a Jaeger. Third of all. Just like that. So that is the process behind every single sin, every single one of them. So you can see how long that takes. I have only done two and I even, I didn't even put the subtitles for the second one yet. So that's how time consuming that can be. And now I'm going to show you what it looks like for a finished product. All right, so this is everything wrong with uh, Cinema Sins Ready Player One. This is what it looked like when I was finished with it. So as you can see, this is all the stuff that I had to do. Now you can imagine how long this may have took, uh, just from you know the um, uh, the editing that we just did on the the Pacific Rim video right there. So you'll see that this is extraordinarily long, it's extraordinarily arduous. It takes me a hell of a long time to do all of this, and this is without subtitles, by the way. Now imagine if I had to throw subtitles on there. All these cuts, all this. Editing was done manually by myself. You see this? This is ridiculous. <laughs> is it not? It's an insane amount of work. It's an insane amount of work that is placed into these videos. And the people who criticize me have no idea the amount of time and effort that I'm putting into these videos. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of the work that I put into making these videos so that if I ask people for support on Patreon, you can understand why that support is needed 
if I'm to continue making these videos and uh, begin increasing the output. This is something people began saying to me in July when my channel began its rapid uh, increase in popularity. I'm okay with people not liking the concept, thinking that it's lame or whatever, but what I am not okay with are people that claim I am copying and or stealing content. To be clear, stealing content means I upload their video in its entirety without giving them credit and pretend the upload is my original work. This is not what happens on these videos. I always link to the original in the description and their channel. My work constitutes a rebuttal where I am answering the questions or criticisms raised by CinemaSins. To make this concept easy to understand, think of it like a Facebook post. One of your friends posts some bullshit and you respond. CinemaSins' videos are the Facebook post and I am the response to that, except I'm doing it in video form. Rebuttal videos are clearly a thing on YouTube, but for some reason I get accused of stealing content. Even better are those that claim I'm somehow copying them, except they don't realize that's the joke. That is what makes this series unique. No other channel uses their direct style to make fun of them. Cinema Sin Sins has his own style, Bob Vids had his own style, but I am purposefully using their style against them. This, my friends, is what actual parody is. Weird Al Yankovic and Mad TV both parody other artists to either make a point or to make fun of the original artist. How is what I am doing any different? Here's a hint, it's not. Here's a fun one. Uh, in my Everything Wrong with CinemaSins Jurassic World video, this happened. She cannot outrun a T-Rex. Remember the first movie when they're in the Jeep? Must go faster, Jeff Goldblum's torso? Agreed. Has to be the dumbest scene in this otherwise awesome film. Yes, I removed a sin because I agreed with Jeremy that Bryce Dallas Howard outrunning Rexy is ridiculous. Then, about a hundred comments came pouring in, talking about how a T-Rex's running speed is this, and that it's old and all manner of rebuttals to that removal of a sin. Seriously, here's a control F for the word Rex. It got so bad that I even referenced it in my Winter Soldier video. Actually, the real reason Fury can't call a Tony Stark right now is because S.H.I.E.L.D. has been compromised and Fury no longer has access. Wow, thanks Stan. You finally proved useful for once. Thanks Birdman. Now, about the T-Rex running in your Jurassic World video. The gist of their argument is that Claire should have been able to outrun a T-Rex because an actual T-Rex's running speed is about 17 miles per hour, give or take. Here's the problem. This is Jurassic Park. Almost nothing in these films is accurate. They have velociraptors that are the size of humans when they're actually about the size of a turkey or a large eagle. They've made Dilophosaurus a turkey-sized theropod with the ability to spit venom when it actually was human-sized didn't have a frill and could not spit venom. There's a near 170 foot Mosasaurus in Jurassic World when the largest specimen ever found was actually around 60 feet. If all this doesn't rustle your jimmies, how about this? They depicted the T-Rex like this when actually T-Rex most likely looked like this. The point is that these are not accurate depictions of dinosaurs and that it had already been established that Rexy was as fast as a Jeep in the first film. Rexy isn't a real T-Rex anyway because she's genetically modified using amphibian DNA which creates an entirely new species, therefore all science regarding T-Rex is moot and doesn't apply to the creature that appears in this science fiction film. I hope that I was able to shed some light on these issues and that people who attempt to criticize me on these topics will at least gain some sort of understanding about these topics because, let's face it, I'm going to receive 15 more comments on these topics by the time you've watched this video. Again, I don't mind being called out on things where I fuck up, and I've readily admitted to mistakes that I've made. Just let's stop with this stuff because it's tiresome and you're not the first. Anyway, thanks for listening to me ramble and defend myself. I know these aren't the most glamorous videos to watch, and believe me, they're definitely not the most fun to make, but it is most definitely necessary. I'll see you in the next one.